So when you're solving questions, it's very important to make sure that you are reading the instructions uh, and not trying to rush through. So for this question number one, where I think some people might go wrong with this, it's, it, it says, what is the area of the figure? I know we're learning surface area and volume right now, but in order for us to solve for the surface area figure, we have to know how to solve for different shapes uh, and the area of those. So since this doesn't say surface area in just the area, this is not a 3D image. This is a two-dimensional flat image, meaning that there is no like depth to it. So what this shape is that we have here is this is a triangle on top of a rectangle. So it's not a 3D image. If it was a 3D image and we had to solve for all these different sides, like top, bottom, and the front and back, it would say surface area. So it just says, what is the area? So there are two different shapes here. We have this shape here, the triangle on top, and then we have the rectangle on the bottom. So when we're solving for the triangle, you see how they give this little dotted and the little square there? That's saying that's the height of this triangle. And when we're solving for the area of a triangle, we need to know the base and the height. And the height is the distance from one vertex to the other side that intersects at 90 degrees. So even though they're going to give us this X and Y here, we don't actually need it because we don't know that any of them intersect at 90 degrees. So that's this information that's not even needed. Since Z is the bottom side of this rectangle, we know Z is also the top side of the rectangle. So Z is going to be the base of this. So Z is 24. So we know the base of this triangle is 24 inches. The height of it, they say, is H and H is 8. So then we know our height is 8. So the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So one half of 24 times eight. And then you can just go ahead and type that into a calculator. So 24 times eight divided by two is then gonna give us 96. So then we know the area of the triangle is 96. For this one, the height of the rectangle is W, which they say is 10. And we know the base is Z, which is 24. So 10 times 24, because the area of a rectangle is base times height. So 10 times 24 is 240. So if we wanna know the figure or the area of this figure, we then take the two areas that we just solved for, 96 and 240, and we add them together. And 96 plus 240 is equal to 336. So the area of this figure is 336 inches squared. All right. So where I think some people might go wrong with this is because we're dealing with surface area. There's jumping straight into it and not reading the question. But remember, make sure you are reading the question. If it doesn't say surface area and just area, it is that two-dimensional flat shape. Um, but on your test, I'll make sure that you guys are more than aware of that. All right, so for this one, it says, what is the area of the shaded region? So if you can imagine, without that white part in there, and we're just finding the area of this here, well, we're going to find what the area is of that circle. And then if we were to remove... Um, the area of the triangle. So then if we just take the area of that triangle, we are going to remove that out. Well, how do you think we can remove it? Well, we can do that through subtraction. So if we take find the area of the circle and then we subtract the area of the triangle, that will give us what the area is without it. So the first thing we're going to do is solve for the area of the circle. We know the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. Well, this is our diameter and our diameter is 10. So if we take 10 and divide it by two, that means our radius is equal to five. So our area is equal to pi times five squared, which is our area is then going to be equal to 25 pi. So that's the area if we had the entire circle completely filled in, but we're removing this area of the triangle. So in this case, we know that the base of the triangle is gonna be 10. Now, Th this is saying the distance from the center to the top. So even though they don't flat out give us that, we know that that is the radius. So that's going to be five. So the height of this triangle is five. So the area of a triangle is one half of base times height. So one half of 10 times five, which is then going to be 25. So we need to remove that out. So I told you before, if you guys left your answer like this, 25 pi minus 25, I'll give you full credit for that. Um, but if you type that into your calculator, um, it will then give you that our area is equal to 53.5 uh, uh, units squared. If you're going to leave it like this, make sure you're still writing units squared. Um, this is your exact answer, um, and this is our approximate answer because we're rounding. 
Um, but that is our answer for that one. So if we're finding the answer of that shaded region, we find the whole figure and then we remove the area of the parts that we don't want. All right, it says a cube has a volume of 729 cubic units. Well, we know the volume of the cube, as we talked about before, is side cube. So we know our volume. And because we want to find the surface area, we need to figure out what the side length of that cube is. So then our volume is 729. So that's equal to our side raised to the third power because we know in a cube, if we're finding the volume, it's equal to our length times our width times our height, length times width times our depth. And since they're all going to be the same, and no, no, not all three, but if they're all going to be the same, uh, then we would go ahead and have to uh, multiply them all together. So remember, to find, uh, so they're all the same, should put side. So this will then be side times side times side. So our volume is equal to side cubed. To find what our side is, we are taking the cube root of it. And if you look when you're doing your calculator, it'll be in a yellow. So you press shift and the square root button, and that will actually be the cube root button. And you take the cube root of 729, which is a nine. So our side had to be equal to nine. Well, the surface area of a cube has a very specific um, formula as well. So remember, when we're finding the surface area, that's a 3D shape, we find the area of one of these sides. So our area of a square is equal to side square. And since it's a cube, all those sides are going to be the same. So think about a dice. They all have the exact same side length and area of each one. So there's six of them. So the surface area of a, a cube is equal to six times S squared because one of those sides is S squared and we have six equal sides. So since we just figured out that our side is nine, our surface area becomes six times nine squared. So our surface area is six times 81. So our surface area is equal to 486 um, units squared. And that would be your final answer. Um, for this one, you didn't have to use that formula. You could have like figured it out by solving the area of the one and, and then going through it. But we do have a formula. And remember, you will get the formulas on your test. All right, so for this one, it says Wiley is building a large toolbox out of wood and wants to paint the outside, including the bottom. Use a sketch to determine how much paint he will need. So we have two different shapes here. We have this triangular prism. And then we have this rectangular prism as well. Now, the thing is, although we're going to be painting the bottom of this rectangular prism, we are not painting the top because it's part of this shape. So in this case, there's only going to be five sides that we're going to be painting here. We're on this triangular prism. We're not going to paint the bottom either because it's going to be attached to the top. So we have one, two, three, four different sides because we have the two triangle sides. If you can imagine it, the top right and top left, and then we have the front and back of it. So what we're going to do now is to solve for the area of the, we're going to do the triangular prism first. Well, the triangle, we have this here. We know it's got to be a four, base of 14, and then it has a height of four because that's what it tells us. So then we have a height of four. Uh, so then from here, we know the area of the triangle is one half of 14 times four. Well, this is then going to give me 28. And we have two of them. We have the front and we have the back that we will have to, um, paint. So we times that by two. So it's 56. So then we know, so then we know that the surface area uh, of the front and back of that triangle is 56. And then in this triangle, we do have these two separate rectangles on the top right and top left that we need to do as well. So for these, if you notice, this is 12. This is 12. So that means all these rectangles do have a side length of 12. Like if we look at these ones here, they're all going to be 12. And since this is eight and they don't tell us that the slanted height of the other one changes, that means it's two equal triangles or two equal uh, rectangles. So we would have eight and 12 because this side is 12. So this side is 12 and all of them are going to be 12. Uh, and then since that slant of that toolbox is eight and it doesn't tell us that this slant is anything different, that means it's also going to be eight too. So then we will do eight times 12, which is then going to give me 96. And then we have two of these because we have one rectangle and one rectangle. So we will then do 96 times two, which is then 192. So we know that the area of the two rectangular sides of the triangular prism is 192. So now what we have left if we, is we have this front part of our toolbox. So I'm going to draw this here. 
and we know that we have a base of 14 and it says this height's 10. So all of the height of this box has to be 10. So then we know our area is 14 times 10 because it's base times height. So it's 140 and we have two of them. We have the front part and the back part. So 140 times two is 280. So then we know then that we have 280 that we're going to have to account for. And then the last part, one that we're going to account for here, let me just change this color. Let's do purple. Uh, is this side box? Oh, it does say including the bottom. So we do need to paint that. Uh, so we have two of these rectangles here. And same thing, these two rectangles are going to be of the same dimensions. Uh, and they're going to be 12 by 10. So 12 by 10. And we know that's going to give me 120 because 12 times 10. And then we have two of those that we're going to be uh, painting. So it's going to be 240 that we have to account for. Uh, so let me just go ahead and I'm going to rewrite these numbers off to the side. So we make this a little bit smaller. So we're running out of space. So we have 56, 192, 280, and 240. And then the last part that we have to now paint is the bottom of it. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this color in gold. Uh, and here is the bottom rectangle that we have. So if I just draw this rectangle off to the side, it will have a base of 12 and a height or a base of 14 and a height of 12. So we know that our formula for area of that is base times height. So 14 times 12 is going to give me 168. Uh, and we only have one of them because even though there's going to be a second part of it, it's part of that, like underneath that lid. So we only have one of them that we actually need to account for. So now to find our total surface area is we would then add all of these together. So 56 plus 192 plus 280 plus 240 plus 168 is going to be 936 uh, inches squared. And that would be our final answer for that. All right. So this last question kind of combines everything that we did into like one question. So it says Trevin's grandparents are planning to put a pool in their backyard. Shown as a drawing of the pool. The rectangular part is a rec is a regular pool and the semicircle part is a hot tub. So when it says semicircle, we know that means half of a circle. Trevin's grandparents want to put edging around the edge of the entire pool and the hot tub. So that is this blue line here, all right? So it's the edge of the pool. It's not actually going to be this part cutting through the pool, all right? So we need to find the perimeter of that part of the rectangle and that semicircle. So since the, this side's 31, I know the opposite side of it's 31. And normally we have the, the form of 2L plus 2W we can use, but we're not accounting for this as part of our um, edging. So we're just going to add 12 plus 31 plus 31. And then we need to solve for this part of the circumference of the circle. And we know since it's a semicircle, it's going to be half. And the circumference of a circle is equal to uh, 2 pi r or pi times our diameter. And since we know this is 12, we know that this is 12, which means our diameter of circle is 12. So our circle is equal to, uh, circumference is equal to 12 pi. However, it is a semicircle. It is half of it. So then we need to divide this by two and 12 pi divided by two is six pi. So that means this part of our semicircle is equal to six pi. So we would add six pi to this. So now 31 plus 31 is 62 plus 12 is 74. So you can write your answer as 74 plus 6 pi feet. I will accept that uh, because that is the exact answer. But we can also type that into our calculator and round it to the nearest tenth, uh, which would then give us 92.8 feet. I would accept either one of these answers uh, as your final answer. All right, so for B, I'm just going to zoom out. For B, uh, it says they also need to order a custom cover. Assuming the cover fits exactly how much materials need it to make. So the cover now is the area. So even though that they share this, this part here, we still are going to find the area of the rectangle, right? Because we're not doing the perimeter anymore. We're finding the area that filled up. So the area of the rectangle we know is going to be uh, 12 times 31. So 12 times 31. is equal to 372. So now we know that we need 372 for that area of the rectangle portion. And then we need to find the area of the semicircle. And we know our area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. Well, we know that if our diameter is equal to 
uh, 12, our radius is half of that. So our radius is equal to six. So the area of that semicircle is going to be um, pi times six squared, because our radius, so our area would be 36 pi if it was the full circle, but it's a semicircle, so it's half of it. So we now need to divide that by two. So the area of the semicircle is 18 pi. So we can then add those two together. So once again, you can leave your answer like this, which our units are feet squared. Or you can go ahead and type it into your calculator of 372 plus 18 pi, which is then 428.5 feet squared. All right, either one will be acceptable. You can leave it in the exact or you can round it. Okay, and then the last one, it says the rectangular part will be five feet deep and the hot tub will be three feet deep. How much water will it take to fill the pool? So now we're talking about the volume. But we know the volume is equal to our area of our base times the height. So we already found the area of our bases here. So it's going to be actually a little bit easier for us. For the rectangular part, it's 372, and it's going to have a depth of 5. So we will multiply that together. So 372 times 5 is 1,860. So we know the volume of the pool is 1,860. Well, we found for the area of the circle, the semicircle, we know is equal to 18 pi. And then we know that the volume is just adding that depth to it. So we just need to multiply the depth of it. Because remember, we talked about stacking the paper on top of each other. Well, we're just stacking these semicircles on top of each other. And since the depth of the hot tub is 3, we will then do 18 pi times 3. So 18 times 3 is going to be 54. I didn't mean to put A there. Um, it's not area. Uh, it is volume. So the volume then is going to be equal to 54 pi. So if we want to know how much water is going to go in at total, we will do 1,860 plus 54 pi units cubed. Uh, but since we know our units are feet, so this would then be feet cubed. Um, and once again, I'll accept that as a final answer. But since we can plug this into our calculator, we can go ahead and type that if you want to give me a rounded answer, which would then be the volume of the entire pool and jacuzzi together is 2,000. Uh, 29.6 um, feet cubed. And then that would be your final answer. All right. Um, so that is it. You guys will be able to review this on Monday in class um, if you're done your project or if you need more time for your project, then you can use that then. Just make sure you're just getting help with your